Hello, my fellow bookworms. This is Philippa from Quick Book Reviews, author interviews and book reviews. Well, this is a Christmas special. It's so exciting. And for the fourth year running, I'm joined by Lauren from Lauren and the Books. Lauren, welcome. Welcome to me and Merry <laughs> Christmas to you. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas in November. I love that we record this in November. This sort of kicks off my Christmas spirit, you know. <laughs> I just had to find my Christmas playlist to play as I was just getting ready for today. <laughs> to, to raise morale, to yeah. raise Christmas morale. When do you put your Christmas tree up in your house? Well, it tends to be quite late and I think we need to change that. But yeah. I am full on, I mean, I'm going out today. I've got my Christmas hoodie on and I will be wearing it after we've ended this Definitely. chat. So I'm fine to welcome Christmas in. 1st of December is definitely Christmas is here. Everyone needs to wear yeah. Christmas earrings, drink from Christmas mugs. It's happening. Tree a bit later. I've but your Christmas mug. Oh, and me, and me. You're, you're well ahead of times. <laughs> when is your tree going up? This weekend, so probably tomorrow. So we're recording this on the 17th of November. Um, David and I think we're going to put the tree up tomorrow and then it's a weekend event. It takes a long, long time. Um, but we've slowly been sneaking a few little Christmassy bits in. We've got the Christmas bed sheets on. As you, at Same as you, I'm in my Christmas jumper. We've been in Christmas pyjamas this week. So, yeah, it's slowly, slowly little bits coming in. So, But the big, the big Christmas explosion happens this weekend. Well, let's just look at the year so far, because, you know, coming up to mm. Christmas, you start looking at what happened the year before and what might happen next year. What sort of a year has it been for you? It's been a lovely year. It's been a lovely year in terms of reading. It's been my first year as a wife. So we got married in December last year. So that's very exciting. Um, I've started a new Archers podcast with... Uh, with some archers friends which is very exciting <laughs> um that's been a real highlight that's been lovely to be able to do that and yeah it just it's been very nice it sort of feels a bit calmer this year i think maybe because of last year we were getting ready for the wedding and stuff like that we've done quite a lot of decorating here as well so that took up that was a bit less calm but yeah it's been a really nice year but yeah in terms of reading i've read some absolute like early doors I was reading such good books and I think I'm going to really, some years when I do my best books of the year, I really have to think, oh, okay, so that was a four star, but would it make my best books of the year? But this year, it's just been like amazing. It's what, probably one of my best reading years since I started the, the, the YouTube channel, which is 10 years it will be in, uh, in May. So yeah, an amazing reading year. What about you? Yeah, um, I have had, it's been a mixture, I suppose. I mean, I've had some really great personal things that have happened. You know, daughter's got off to university. I managed to stay there. So that's a thumbs up. <laughs> <Hurrah. laughs> Son is pursuing his singing. So that's all good. The podcast, as you say, starting the All About the Archers podcast is just, that's my happy place, definitely. But for books, I've just found haven't had enough time and I've just taken on too much with the book podcast so from next yeah. year I'm just going scaling it back because it's like when I when there's a, a book club happening I don't really get to sit and just enjoy reading that book I'm just skim 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 yeah. so I next year I really want to change that and uh, there's enjoy a real fine line isn't there between having reading as a hobby and something that you love and, and like you just said about um, a happy place and things like that and then wanting to elevate that a little bit to making it like a podcast or in my case a YouTube channel but then not losing that love of reading and not looking at a big pile of books and thinking oh well I've got to read that because I'm reading it for that and I've got to do that like sometimes you just want to be able to go to the library and pick up a book and take it home and read it so like you really the balance of that is is difficult to achieve but yeah I think um I'm going to scale down a little bit next year as well so I currently do three videos a week um but I think I'm going to go down to two videos a week but they're still like quality over quantity yes. Philippa is what I'm going for next year Yes. And I know I'm so fortunate to be sent books from publishers to read and review. I know I am really fortunate, so it sounds terrible to say it, but I just feel so obliged to read those books and I don't get to read the books yeah. that I want to read. So, yes, next yeah, year, it's, it's all all changed. Philip is in charge, if if that can happen. <laughs> but, Lauren, there is one particular thing that you've done this year that it it just stands for everything, I think, that you are. 
It's something that I will never forget. And it just, it's Lauren to a T. And oh, that is... That? <laughs> you're wondering now. That is your million steps. Oh, of course, I did that, yeah. Because that you... That was quite the, uh, the big yeah, thing. <laughs> you had it all planned. You had the structure, you yeah. were doing it. And yeah. then, and yeah. you had so many steps you had to do every day, which was great. And the, the number of steps were generally sort of going down and down and down. So the target that you still had to do is getting more and more and more. And if that had been me, I'd have curled into a ball and said, it's impossible. I'm never doing another step again in my life. Woe is me. Yeah. But you, you just had this positive attitude that you can do it. And you did it by the skin of oh, your well, teeth. But you, you. I mean, did it. I very much believe in myself with most things. Like, I always think I can just do anything all the time. So, yeah, when I set that, I never thought... And when I, I set off on the back foot, didn't I? Because I think... So, I wanted to do a million steps in 100 days, which is 10,000 steps a day, which is apparently what we should be doing every day anyway. Although, not so much now. They they released the news report, didn't they? Say you only really <laughs> yes. need to do 6,000 a day. <laughs> all so, it's like 10,000 steps a day. That's fine. Yeah, I do have quite a sedentary lifestyle. I work in an office job. My hobbies are reading, which are sitting down. But I, not for one minute did I doubt I couldn't do it, but I got so far behind in the first half. And yeah, we went on our honeymoon. That was something else I should have mentioned. So we went on our honeymoon to Norway. We did quite a lot of walking while we were in Norway. So that helped chip into it. But when the business end of it, I was still having to do like 18,000 steps a day. And I would just walk up and down my corridor um, on an Instagram live of an evening, just so I could be sort of like talking. Like, sometimes there'd literally be about six people watching. <laughs> And I would just be walking up and down. Other times I'd have more people and they'd be asking questions. And we'd have a little evening chat about books and things like that as I was walking up and down the corridor. But yeah, I forgot that I'd done that this year. God, this year has been long. But I'm actually going to do that again next year. So I'm going to start it again on the 1st of January. And um, now I know that I can do it in my hallway of an evening. I'm going to make sure I top up at the end of every day to make sure that I've got 10,000 steps so that I'm not falling behind straight away. Thank you for reminding me that I did that. I forgot about that. It it really inspired me to be more positive, be more Lauren. I think we could all do with, with that. And for those oh, people that haven't thing. watched your YouTube channel, if there is somebody who hasn't, I really <laughs> commend it because, yeah, you it, it's the joy that you give us. And I think that's what makes your videos really stand out. So thank you for that. Oh, that's Philip, very, very oh, nice. thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for... Honestly, the, the podcast, like Quick Book Reviews, I've absolutely loved listening this year. Like a couple of times there's been some real moments. Like I remember listening to you talking about um, Death of a Bookseller by Alice Slater. And that day I was going to a bookshop and I literally listened to you discussing the book, thought, I need this book, bought it that day and started reading it that night. And like I wouldn't have done that if it hadn't been for like that episode you just I was so excited and that, that was one of my favorite books of the year like early doors and uh yeah I've uh I've loved listening to it and then getting involved with the all about the archers podcast as well like you're amazing at what you do well done well done you, and Merry Christmas you do, round of applause for you we're just having sorry everyone we're just having this loving but anyway it's just okay. a Christmas loving yes what are your plans for Christmas is my next question what have you got lined up we're hosting on Boxing Day, actually. So that's Ooh. um, that's new. Well, we did that. I think we did it the Christmas before lockdown. We hosted on Boxing Day. We'd never be able to have, um, we'd never be able to cook a roast dinner here. We haven't got the the, the oven space for that. So buffet Boxing Day works out <laughs> quite well. So we've got my family round on Boxing Day, and uh, we're at David's family's on Christmas Day. Um, but yeah, so that's the sort of plans. I'm off work in between Christmas and New Year, which is nice because it means you get a bit of downtime and I like sort of a day just sat on the sofa reading and playing with new toys and things like that. So yeah, we've got quite a busy December going up. David and I are in a choir and we've got quite a lot of choir performances and I'll be doing Vlogmas, which is a video every day in um, in December. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a busy December, but as always, very much looking forward to it. How are you celebrating Christmas? Yes, so we host on Christmas Day. I've got quite a small yeah. family, so we host on Christmas Day. But I um, don't have the level of permission to cook a turkey. I, I don't have that authority. So my mother cooks the turkey at her house and then brings okay. it round on a tray. Brings it along. Yes. I see. I have permission for vegetables and puddings, which is fine. Potatoes? I'm, yes, 
I'm, uh, well, my husband yeah. does the potatoes because I am a bit, okay. I get far too stressed in the kitchen. Um, but yeah, so basically, <laughs> just I'm not the chef in the family. But I will, yes, we'll be doing crackers and games and present opening and oh just lovely nice. lovely happy times but will you be a bit worried you've got new carpet now Lauren you're doing a buffet with family on boxing day are you going to be out with a, like a monitor with a whistle and a clipboard so every meal since we've got the carpets David and I have sat at the dinner table normally we are slobs on the sofa watching Richard Osman's House of Games and we've been sitting at the dinner table so nothing gets eaten now without sitting at the dinner table so yes there'll be a buffet which will be in the kitchen and then you will be sitting down and eating it and not getting anything on the carpet we'll have a new sofa by that point as well we've got a new sofa coming next weekend um so yeah there'll be nothing being eaten on the sofa as well so quite a strict Christmas on here around here on Boxing Day I imagine Will there be Loads a rotor? Will there be a rotor for the table so people can sit down and eat on that? <laughs> there's enough space for us to all sit around the table. So we've got quite a big table. So there'll be seven of us. So there's enough space for everyone. But yeah, there'll be no getting up and unless you finish your plate. <laughs> and if you want to eat a mince pie, you can eat it over the sink. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I like this structure and organisation. I've become my mother. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But this has actually happened. The wow. number of times I think now I am literally turning into my mother. Yes, I think that just happens. I feel sorry for my daughter. It's just hit me all of a mind. sudden. I wasn't expecting it, but it's just happened. <laughs> what colour is the new sofa going to be? It's green. I am so excited about it. I've always wanted a green velvet sofa um, and it's like a forest green. Um, oh, lovely. It's going to look gorgeous. So, yeah, we're going to... It's. I'll just move you here. So... This wall here, which is where it's going in front of, there's like some little green droplets um, and it will look perfect in front of that. So I'm very, very excited about it looking so nice Fantastic. in front of that. So, yeah. so my but next no question... No eating on that either. I don't even know no. when I'm allowed tea on that. <laughs> Are you, are you going to be like my grandmother? Have like these plastic things covering the sofa yeah, when anyone can... I remember those. I remember those, yeah. Get your cling film out, Maybe. Lauren, quick. no. Yeah. <laughs> so my next question is about not only your favourite day over Christmas, because for some people it isn't actually Christmas Day, but also what your favourite sort of hour of that day is. What What is That's the... That's a lovely question. The top. Well, David and I often have a little... We tell a few little porky pies in between Christmas and New Year because... We'll say to one set of family, oh, no, we can't do that. We're doing this or we can't. We're meeting up with friends or we're doing that. And then we just have a day of, of nothing. Um, and this started when we first got together, when we first moved in with each other. Um, and we were being sort of pulled about, can you come and do this? Can you come and do this? And we were like, no, 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 we can't. We're doing this that day. So that sort of stayed. I mean, they're well aware of what happens now. So we're just like, we just want a day. So that normally falls around sort of 27th, 28th, once Christmas has happened. And yeah, that's just a sort of sitting on the sofa in your pyjamas day. I'll look at all my new books. I normally get a cookbook or something. So maybe I'll think about cooking something out there. Eating a lot of leftovers, which is lovely. Um, back in the day, David used to get a lot of Blu-rays and stuff. Obviously, that's less happening nowadays. But we would maybe sit and read that, uh, watch that or um, play a board game. So those sort of like quieter times are my yeah. sort of special moments. And just having that, especially after Christmas and Boxing Day have been quite mad to then just have those moments with David and like maybe have a bath with a new bath bomb and and stuff like that. So yeah, I love Christmas and Boxing uh, Christmas Day and Boxing Day, but yeah, I think it's the the quieter times are my my favourite times. So maybe just coming into the lounge on the twenty seventh and thinking, oh, I've got a lovely big pile of books just to look through, and so maybe that sort of hour, maybe eight until nine on the 27th of December where I'm in a nice pair of pyjamas and I've got a cup of tea and there's a little bit of leftovers for breakfast and I'm looking at my big pile of books yeah that's my that's my happy time oh gosh that's wonderful so we'll think of you on the 27th what about you I, I want think... to know your favorite hour <laughs> I think Christmas day is probably my favorite day I'm such a child I love it but you always worried, oh, will someone like this present? Will this go well? Will people get on? All of that. So I think my favourite hour, it, this sounds terrible. <laughs> my favourite hour is when everyone's gone home. I'm in my pyjamas. Yeah, no, I'm sitting down well. and I'm having um, cold Brussels sprouts, chestnut stuffing and gravy. 
I'm in heaven with that. Lovely. Yeah. And just sitting there on the sofa, happy memories of what's happened in the day, but it's done. Yeah. And it's just that. Yeah, I think that's my my favourite hour. So about six o'clock. That's got um, Marks and Spencer's Christmas advert vibes that has. You just sort of <laughs> sat at the end of the day thinking it's done. Past yeah. the leftovers. Yes. <laughs> and like you, I like quiet time because life is so busy. So once Christmas Day is done, I like a bit of time of doing as little as possible. Board games, yeah. eating chocolate, reading books, having a lovely time. Yeah. Oh, I so can't then, wait. Yeah. <laughs> and I do also have to ask, are you asking for any book? for Christmas are there any books in particular well I'm interested in your take on this as well because as two people who have a lot to do with books throughout the year and you mentioned earlier about getting sent books from publishers and and um, I use the library a lot as well so a lot of people are always a bit worried to buy me books in case they're doubling up and stuff like that so I give a sort of very small list of a few things so I have asked for a few books one of the books I've asked David and I've got quite into listening to classical music this year um and that's partly because when we went on our mini moon last year where we stayed they had classic fm on and it was just so lovely to have that on just in the background all the time so that's something we've done this year listen to classic fm it's basically always on in the background but i'd really like to get to the point where i'm familiar with pieces of music or i can look at a composer and think oh yeah i'd like something but oh that's by that person and stuff like that because we're not at that point at the moment um, and there's a book called A Year of Wonder. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've um, got it, And it's yeah. about a different... Oh, have you? So it's about a different piece of classical music um, every day to listen to. Um, and yeah, I'm very... So I, I, I put... That's on my Christmas list. So that... And I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting that. And that's nice because I love a book that sort of gives all year round as well. So that is something that will give all year round. So yeah, I give a very small, um, a small amount of books. Now, David's mum always gets me a lovely lovely pile of books and um she goes to do she quite enjoys it I think she goes to Waterstones and she says she does her book haul um and buys me lots of books and um occasionally there's some overlap but she always gives me the receipt so I can take it back and, and change it and then maybe get something in the sale as well which is nice um so yeah so I do get books and I always ask my sister for a vegetarian cookbook like I never say oh get me this vegetarian cookbook because I quite like to see what I might end up with. Um, so that's always something I end up getting as well. Like, and like I said, I love getting cookbooks for Christmas. So do you get, do you get books for Christmas or are people nervous to buy them for you? I, yes, I'm exactly the same in that people are nervous to buy me a book, but also they have this very strange philosophy that they think, I mean, prepare yourself for this, Lauren. They think I've I know got enough say. books. I'm just like, that's not no. true. It's not at all. I want to be sitting That's there on the evening of Christmas Day looking at the books that I've received and being very happy. So, yeah. yeah. There's but no I think such I'm... thing as too many books. Exactly. So I'm going to have to specify. I think there won't be anything on my Christmas list except books. That'll just force them yeah. into getting me some books. But there's like the Nigel Slater Christmas Chronicles that you ha that, yeah. that you refer to. And it looks wonderful, but that's quite a bit of money. So I thought, well, I'll ask for that for Christmas and then I'll have it. It's a every... lovely gift. It's a lovely, lovely gift. Yeah. And it keeps giving. And you could even, there's even a little bit that you can read because it's done in like diary excerpts. It goes until February. So you could even like just do that end of it once you've got it for Christmas and then pick it up again in November when it starts again. But yeah, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely gift to get. And even just to browse that and look at the photography and stuff, that'll be a nice thing to do. That's a great mm. idea for a gift. Fabulous. Well, talking about books, every year mm. for the last, yeah, fourth time, we have got five books Four each. Years. Yes, we've got five books each that so we excited. have selected and we haven't conferred. We don't, I have an idea, I think, of some of the books that you're going to talk about, but we will. I have an idea of a book that you, uh, two books that you might have as well. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see how we get on. What I should say at the beginning is normally, I spend November reading Christmas books so that when I come to this discussion, I have books that I would actually recommend that I've read. And that works really well because I can recommend and endorse them. But then in December, the last thing on this earth that I want to then see 
is a Christmas book, which is quite a shame. So I've changed it this year. I'm going for books oh. that I think will be really good, but I haven't read them yet. Yeah. And I'm going to in- just enjoy reading them in December. You're going to do the Christmas December reading. That's what happens for me. First of December, we're straight on to Christmas books. One thing that has happened this year, though, before we get on to our five books each, is that I've put a lot of reservations on at the library for different Christmas books. Um, And I went to pick up two Christmas books. Um, So there's a Hercule Poirot Silent Night book and uh, Midnight at the Christmas Library, I think, by Jenny Colgan. Went to pick them up. They're on two week back loans because they're brand new books. I've got to get them back by the 28th of November. I'm not going to get those read, am I? Oh, what a shame. I know. Because I don't start oh. the Christmas reading until the 1st of December. So those two that will be going by the wayside, oh. maybe I'll get them on um, audiobook. Who knows? Two weeks is a very short amount of time. But I a understand Very short it. amount of time. Especially for like re- like people who read a lot as well. So I can't even yeah. imagine yeah. how yeah. people who don't read as vicariously as I do, like to be able to get that to get it done in two weeks. They're big books as well. Oh, dear, I do. But onto the books, onto the Christmas books. Onto the book, right. Let's have your first... I'm really excited. Let's have your first book. (laughs) Me too! Um, Okay, so my first book I've gone for is Love Light Farms by B.K. Borison. So I run a um, a Patreon page uh, where we do a Christmas book club. It runs every month, but it started as a Christmas book club. And there was two books up for uh, the vote this this Christmas. Um, And this was the one that didn't win. So this is Love Light Farms by B.K. Borison. But so many people... I I had always planned to read this, but so many people tell me that this is a bit steamy and I thought oh steamy Christmas don't mind if I do but yeah it sounds very Hallmark so it's about Stella she wants to save the Christmas tree farm that she lives on and she enters a contest with an insta famous influencer called Evelyn St James there's publicity with the cash prize she really hopes she wants to be able to save the Christmas tree farm Um, but she lied on the application form to say that she had a boyfriend that she ran the farm with and she doesn't have a boyfriend so they're coming to visit she needs to find herself a fake boyfriend to run the farm with and there we go so there we go I'm not much of a romance reader apart from at Christmas so Love Like Farms BK Borison potentially steamy Christmas tree farm we'll see how it goes (laughs) <laughs> Sounds fantastic. I like the sound of that one. Well, my first yeah. one, there is an author who I interviewed last year called Alexandra Benedict, and she writes Christmas books, Christmas sort of murder mystery books. And yeah. her book this year is The Christmas Jigsaw Murders. So this is her new one. It's just out. It's Christmassy. It's got jigsaw puzzles in. There's a murder. I'm so... It's ticking all the boxes. I'm so ready for this book. And the trouble is some books, because I love crime books generally, not true crime, obviously fictional crime. And I love crime books. But when they're done at Christmas, in years past, sometimes they've not quite hit the mark. They've been a bit... I don't know, just a bit weak and haven't really... Wishy-washy almost. Yes, wishy-washy. Whereas when I read Alexandra's book last year about a murder on a train or something... Is it called, like, The the Christmas Express or something? Yes. Murder on the Christmas Express or something? Yeah, I remember seeing it in foils, yeah. And so I just thought this one about Jigsaw... It's just going to be superb. And I really remember interviewing Alexandra and she really was very honest and I just really enjoyed our conversation. I haven't forgotten that. So I thought, yes, I'm ready for and the Christmas And that's out now, is murder. it? Ready this to go. Out now, ready to go. People can get hold of this immediately. So that's my book oh, That one. might be going on my list. I think that's going on my list. Right, book <laughs> two is one I think you might have. And it's and so this is Christmas by Brian Bilston. Yeah. <laughs> 51 seasonally adjusted poems so did you have that one lined up i did but look i only got sent uh, a little leaflet you got sent the whole book i got oh. sent mm. i've got the leaflet as well but i i then followed up and said oh when there's a finished copy of that i will have it um oh. So, yeah, so I've heard you interview Brian Bilston before um, and uh, I'm very excited about So I have a bit of an unusual relationship, unusual, like, I guess a bit hot and cold relationship with poetry. Like some of it I really love. One of my favourite books from last year was Slug by Holly McNish, which was a whole collection of poetry. Um, 
And yeah, I have to really, really like it. Um, but when I got the little slip, as you did earlier, um, as you've shown, um, I read some of them and I was like, oh, I really like that. And I think it's because Christmas is such a familiar thing for me. And a lot of the book, a lot of the poems were like poems that already existed, maybe with like Christmas bits slipped in. And it just felt like really good fun. One of the ones I really liked, and because it's all a bit different, is there's one called like Christmas in Excelsior. Have you have you read that one, Philippa? Because I've heard... Do, which poem have I got? Oh, the one I chose was called The Good Old Days. Go on, re, re, can you re, how long is it? Can you read so it? So this is, well, Gloria in Excel... I can't really, but like this is for the people who are watching this. Um, but here we go. It's an Excel spreadsheet with different oh, yes. Christmas words in it. So it's called Gloria in Excel spreadsheet. Oh, you have got it. So yeah, weary of the dull hours she'd spend writing Christmas cards to all her friends and thinking of how best to say the same old things in different ways, Gloria made an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, and then it goes on from there. But there's like some real fun things done with like layout. There's a Christmas, uh, there's a poem set in the shape of a Christmas tree. And 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 yeah, I just, I think it's going to be really, really good fun. Um, and I'm looking forward to sort of like dipping in and out of it um throughout december so yeah i'm excited about it Beautiful. yes there was a poem called the good old days that i liked um which is really short pity the poor children of today with their calendars stuffed with chocolates never to know the thrill of opening a small cardboard door and discovering behind it a picture of a bell <laughs> I know. I love that. It's so good. Speaking of poetry, have you ever come across the books called The Poetry Pharmacy? No, but I recently watched a video from Lena Norms um, and that was in her Christmas gift guide. Um, so it's sort of like if you're feeling a bit melancholy or if you're feeling lonely, you can refer to a poem in that book. Yeah, it sounds like such a lovely idea. Yes, it's my favourite. There's three books now in the series. They are my favourite. So you don't have to sit there and read the book cover to cover. It's just when you're feeling a particular emotional feeling, you can look it up and there's a poem. And I don't know how they choose the poems. They're all brilliant. But anyway, I'm waffling. Yeah, I'm it waffling. sounds like such a lovely idea. No, that's another great gift. This doubles <laughs> up as a gift guide, guys. <laughs> now, the next book, I didn't know if you were going to suggest it. So I'll... Hold it up. Is that one of yours? I've got it too, yeah. I'm going to let no, you let's say go, that. I've got another one I can back up. No, Are don't you sure? worry. Because I've got, I've got a backup, if not. I'm fine, I'm fine. No, 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 no. I will keep, I will definitely keep going. So my next one is this. Oh, which I... I own that too, but that's not on my pile. But yeah, yeah. I own that too. It's lovely. <laughs> so this is called The Classic Christmas crime stories and it's part of the Macmillan Collector's Library so it's a lovely little book it's a bit like the one that we read from um, Lark Rise to Candleford so it's a yes. beautiful blue cover it's got a lovely gold uh, blue ribbon it's not that long how many pages is it 300 but they're quite small so I think you could you could zip through it and it's just a collection of lovely Christmas stories. You've got one from Arthur Conan Doyle, Robert Louis Stevenson. And I just think it's one that you just sit down on Christmas Eve and you just feel very, oh, yeah. I'm very Christmassy sitting here reading my, my book. So, yes. Those lovely, that. cute little, I, I felt it when we were reading Lark Rise to Candleford, but I felt like I was in like an Austen novel or something yes. because the books are as big as your hand. So you're literally like holding it. So they're perfect to like read in the bath or have in your handbag and stuff like that. They're just there. Yeah. And yeah, I completely get that you could pull that out on Christmas Eve um, whilst you're having a nice glass of something spiced and just uh, have a little read of it. But yeah, it's a lovely little thing. And those Macmillan Collectors uh, uh, libraries are just gorgeous, aren't mm. they? Yeah, I think it's They're wonderful. So, nice. so, yes, very excited about reading that one. What's your next book? So, as I earlier mentioned, I run a Patreon book club um, but, uh, over Christmas and the book that won the, the vote, because Love Light Farms didn't, was The Christmas Appeal by Janice Hallett. This was obviously going to come up. So The Appeal um, is a book that I read. Oh, you've got it ready there as well. Oh, your cover looks different to mine. Lovely. Um... I read The Appeal um, a couple of years ago. It was one of my favourite books of the year um, a couple of years ago. David read it in a weekend, which is absolutely unheard of that he would read that in a weekend. He's not a big reader like I am, but he was so into it. Um, and then when I heard last year that this was being done this year, I was like, that is going to be amazing. So 
The Appeal was a sort of murder mystery book told, it's a modern epistolary novel, isn't it? Told through um, emails and WhatsApp messages and text messages and parish council minutes and things like that. Um, And this is sort of an extension of that. So I am told you can read this as a standalone. You don't need to have read The Appeal in order to, to get from this. But yeah, there's a dead Santa. There's a panto going on. It's the same sort of vibes in terms of being told through emails and text messages and WhatsApp messages and stuff like that. And yeah, it's just a very fun sort of modern read. And like, it's a real slice of life into sort of village life. It's very, very fun. And yeah, interesting. Like, I cannot wait. I really, really hope I love this because I loved the appeal. I didn't really like the Twyford Code. I didn't even finish Alperton Angels. So hopefully we're going back here and this could potentially be one of the faves of the year because I just based on how much I love the appeal and this is the appeal we've added Christmas I mean surely have you read this I haven't read it yet I'm interviewing Janice next week about this book so I'm really looking forward to that and yeah as somebody who takes part in village pantomimes and the highs and lows of that I cannot wait to read this book. And it's quite a short one as well. Is it? Well, quite a sh- uh, 190 yeah, pages. Just under 200 pages, yeah. Oh, very, very yeah, good. Yeah, very excited. Super. So that's your second, that's your third book. Yeah, that's my third book. That's one. your third book. Yes, great. So my third one is The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. I don't know if you've heard of this one. I have. I've, I was told I was being sent a copy and it hasn't arrived yet. So you've just reminded me, actually. Maybe I'll get onto them and say you'll send it through to me. Um, because, yeah, I think I might have... I think maybe did you put this on your Instagram? Because I'm sure I found out about this through you. Yes, because um, I'm interviewing Peter next week maybe? about it as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I am aware of it. But, yeah, what's, what's the plot? What's the plot? OK, so Peter Swanson is a really um, superb sort of crime thriller author anyway. And this is uh, 120 pages, so it's not long. It's obviously Christmas. It's based in the Cotswolds. There's an American who's having to spend time with her friend's family. And then the friend's twin brother, there's sort of romance potential, but there's strange goings on. And they say, what holiday Mm. horrors await? I just think it looks lovely. I can't wait to talk to Peter about it. So, yes, very, very nice red. Yes. That's a little slim one as well. It's quite nice that these little slim books come out over Christmas because like, yeah, that's a that's a good a good little thing. And also the slimmer ones, I feel like you could easily pop this in as a stocking filler or something because potentially you could get that done sort of just still over the Christmas period. Um, And the same maybe could be said of that book as well. Do you know, you've just made me think of something. Imagine a Christmas book stocking just filled with books and bookish things. I know. Wouldn't that be lovely? I would love that. She wants it. Father Christmas is listening to this. Please, please, can you imagine bookish socks? What would you put in a in a bookish Christmas stocking? Oh, we could have all sorts of things like, and a nice little treat that you might like to eat when you're reading. Some nice bookmarks, like you said, socks, cozy socks, maybe a bookish themed hot water bottle for warmth, and oh, all of those lovely things. Imagine cushion, little blanket, just to set up your perfect reading set situation. <laughs> You'd need quite a bit of st- big stocking to fit all of those in, I suppose. Jamming would, a cushion yeah, in a would. stocking. Yeah. But I- I'd happily yeah. benefit from that. I wouldn't have a problem yeah, with nice. that at all. What's your next book then? Book number four. Okay. So my book number four is um, the, the last in a series. So it's All Change by Elizabeth Jane Howard. Um, this is the fifth book in the Cazalet Chronicles. So David's mum actually bought me the two books um at the, the the top of this uh Cazalet chronicles the, the chronicle one and two for christmas last year so i hadn't heard of any of them um and i read the first one for patreon book club actually in july um and then realized that this one all change is set as you can see from the front cover there's a lovely christmas tree there um over christmas so i thought oh well if i read one a month between now and december i can read this one which is set over christmas in December. So this has been a big 
thing that I've been building up to all year. I'm currently um, 200 pages away from the end of the fourth one, which I'm going to go and sit and enjoy reading for the rest of the day. Um, but yeah, I've had a lovely, lovely, lovely year getting to know these characters, the Cazalets. Um, I can't tell you all that much about this one because there's been a lot of stuff that's happened, but you're, you're following the Cazalet family. Um, at the top of the family are the, the mother and father, elderly um the duchy and the brig um, and then they've got three sons and a daughter and you're following the sons wives and friends and um, people they may or may not be having affairs with their children and people outside of the family and it's just a real look in at this this family's life um told um during the second world war this the fifth one is about 10 years after the last so she wrote this one much later in life um and it's sort of like everybody coming back together for a christmas so i'm very much looking forward to finishing i'm looking forward to finishing the series but also sad because i've had such a lovely time with them but yeah i've got lots more of this i've got like a radio play to listen to and the the bbc made an adaptation of it so i'm going to watch that as well but absolutely have loved that this year so come into the fifth one of these um over christmas i can't wait i actually cannot wait it's quite a chunky one as well so i'm gonna have to spend some time i think we're gonna we're gonna go away for our anniversary and i'm gonna take this with me and just sit in the bath and be cozy and read so that's the plan for that one. Oh, that is wonderful have you got any serious plan for next year to read because if you finish that one what will you embark on another one I know. Well, I've had such a lovely time reading that series this year and it, was, it wasn't it was planned. Like I said, I got them for Christmas last year and I sort of popped them on my shelf and thought, oh, maybe when will I get round to them? But who knows? Um, I haven't got anything planned for definite. However, and I think you'll be excited about this, is that not last Christmas, but the Christmas before, um, David's mum bought me the second in the Barchester Towers series. Um, is it called the Barchester Towers? I know it's your favourite. Barchester I Chronicles. I it is. Yeah, the Barchester Chronicles. Barchester Chronicles. So she bought me the second. So obviously I haven't got round to that yet, but maybe I need to get my hands on the first so then I can get into that series because yeah, I know you're a big you're a big fan. I love Anthony Trollope. I love that series. There's also yeah. um, a huge audiobook you can get of the dramatization of the whole series. And that oh, amazing. is so yeah, I think it's just one audio spend you have to do to get the whole oh, okay. thing and it's i love that the first book in the series is called the warden it's quite short and it's quite it's right. ex, as is the case sometimes it doesn't represent the whole series but it's still a lovely way to get into it and it just goes on from that but yeah anthony trollope mwah, very very good oh that would be so oh, exciting right. yeah well, like, like, like i said yeah I would like to do that because I've had that book on my shelves for a long time and I've sort of, I keep thinking oh, I must get my hands on the first one of the series so then I can read that second one. But yeah, I mean, maybe I should have put that on my Christmas list, the first one, and then I could have got started with it. But I, I have loved reading a series this year. I'd also maybe like to read the whole of the Anne of Green Gables series because um, I've read Anne of Green Gables a few times now. It's actually the book club book for this month um, and I love it, but I've never delved further into the series, but I own them. That's, that's them up there, actually. That's them there. The, uh, so, yeah, I would uh, love to, to read those as well. Fantastic. Well, my next book is... There's a theme here. It seems to be the authors that I'm interviewing <laughs> over the next few oh, weeks. Oh, there we go. But... You're obviously excited <laughs> for them. I am really excited, yes. Yeah. So the next one is, is this book, Murder at Holly House, I Do Like Crime, by Denzel um, Merrick. Yeah. And so this one is set in 1952 in a remote village. Nice. It's Christmas. Oh. We've got snow. The doctor's husband is unfortunately found dead. And Inspector Frank Gros, I think it's Grosby, um, comes along and he has to work out who is a friend, who is a foe, who's lying, who's telling the truth. And I just I just got really good vibes about this one and I can't wait to read it and I can't wait to interview the author. So, yeah, I've got some really fantastic weeks coming up of just reading Christmas books, interviewing authors, just chatting about know. Christmas. It's going to be it's so lovely. You've got, you're in for a right old treat. I love the look of that one. The front cover of that is amazing. It's really sort of, yeah, exciting. Very yeah. good. I think it looks like a bit of fun as well. And yes. Yeah. Can't wait, can't wait. So we come to your final book now, Lauren. Tell me what yeah, is it is. Yeah, so my final book is Mistletoe Malice by <sighs> Kathleen Farrell. So this is a re 
published, isn't it? So this was published before. So what actually drew me to this is that a few people said, if you're a fan of the Cazalets, which is where all changes, then you'll love this. And this is sort of like a family's Christmas. Um, and yeah, it's about a family getting together for Christmas. It's a glorious lost gem, a darkly witty portrait of a dysfunctional post-war English family's festivities for fans of people and then including uh, Elizabeth Jane Howard. So yeah, I think if I've enjoyed the Elizabeth Jane Howard series, the Casale Chronicles, I think I'm going to really enjoy this. I really like the front cover as well with this tree on fire. Yes. Really, yes. You, you, At first look, you think, oh, that's really lovely and festive. And then you're like, oh, actually, that looks quite um, traumatic. Yes. And I loved yeah. it because they said... I'm um, looking forward to it. They said, the fire is on, the sherry is poured, claws are being sharpened. And I was just like, yeah. yeah. I'm so there for that. Yeah. So yes, that looks really so good. Yeah, it's a family being reunited. Sounds great. Been out of print for seventy years, so it's wonderful that they're amazing. We published it again. Yeah, great. Well, my last book is actually one that you included last year, but last year it was only available oh. as an ebook, whereas this year you can read it in yeah. paper, and broken record again i'm interviewing the author about this so really oh, excited amazing. and the book is make you mind this christmas by lizzie huxley jones and it just sounds brilliant the trouble for me is some of the christmas lighter reads they're all a bit the same they're all hallmark video I yeah. just mm. um whereas this sounded different which is what i want and really sort of relevant so yes half goes to a party there are rumors go around about her kissing her friend so she ends up spending christmas with his family and then meets his sister who is irresistible and i am so here for yeah. this book it's, have you read I, it i had a really good time reading that last year yeah so i read that last year and really enjoyed it it's got some great representation and also it sort of unfurls quite sort of cinematically i think a lot of these sort of books set around christmas often do because you can imagine the scenes and they're sort of like parties and her meeting somebody in a bookshop and going to an ice rink and things like that so yeah i um i had a really really fun time with that last year um and hopefully you will this year so excited that it's out in paperback now the paperback looks great as well yeah i had a proof copy last year that i i read and really enjoyed so yeah that's lovely go those are our books so before we go have you got any apart from the reading and maybe starting the anthony trollope series have you got any other plans for 2024 is there anything that you know is going to happen so i've my lovely friend jane campbell who also has a book YouTube channel um for my birthday she made me a little box with lots of little bookish um bookish challenges in so there's sort of like i think there was eight in there and some of them are like read the old read the book that you've had on your tbr for longest and get david to pick you a book so there's lots of little gifts in there which was my birthday present this year which is just so thoughtful and lovely i've done something similar this year with my reading challenges book and i've really loved doing that but i'm getting to the end of that now so it's so exciting to me that i've got something to a bookish challenge to do next year as well and like I said, quite keen to read Anthony Trollope. I'd like to think if, the, if there's another series I could maybe get into as well, because I've had a lovely time with the, the Cazalet Chronicles this year. But yeah, I need to have a good old sit down and think about it, if I'm being honest, because I do love to set myself some reading challenges. Well, when I saw that you'd had that gift from Jen, I suddenly thought, because uh, that was the most amazing gift. So I was like, right, sorry, Lauren, you're, you're off the Archers podcast. I'm phoning Jen, so she'll come on. Get Jen in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, thoughtful and just so wonderful and i haven't even looked like i haven't even peeped in to see what any of the little gifts are so to have that next year another one of these gifts that keep giving so yeah a lovely a lovely lovely thing so i'm really looking forward to to getting into that next year can't wait well we come to the final question which obviously is mandatory on this podcast and it is yep biscuits lauren when you are reading books when you are preparing to record for your lauren and the books uh, youtube channel what biscuits are being consumed can i um give it a christmas uh, slant and tell you should we have a mince pie instead of a biscuit oh my goodness i might need to you know <sighs> all right then go on i love a mince pie <laughs> I love a mince pie. I'm not a big fan of the ones that are um, pastry the whole way round. I quite like um, the icing topped ones or 
a recent uh, development I quite like a crumble topped mince pie so you have like your sort of mm. base and then your mince pie on there and a little bit of crumble on the top um they're quite exciting to me but yeah I um I'm very into a mince pie and I sort of curb them to only this time of year so I get excited to to eat them around this time and there'll be plenty of mince pie eating going on in November and December but only at the table or over the sink only at the table or over the sink, yeah. But absolutely nowhere. Not, nowhere near the new sofa and uh, not on the, the new carpet. <laughs> oh, Lauren, it's just wonderful to talk to you and go through all these books. So exciting. And yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me again. Oh, well, thanks, everyone. That's it for today. I'll be back next week with Christmas book author interviews. Very exciting. So just look after yourselves and I'll talk to you very soon. Take care now. Bye bye.